Hi there. So I've decided to make another uh, screencast about how to use the tracker video analysis software. Uh, this version that we're looking at here is uh, 4.6.2 released in January of 2012. It's a little bit different than the uh, previous version that I made the, the video about. So um, in, in terms of the auto tracking. In this video I'm also going to show you how to define your own parameter. This particular one I'm going to um, define uh, gravitational potential energy. Okay, so let's uh, insert a video. So we go to video import and I've got a video and you can choose which video engine you want here. I've had some trouble with this Zuggle uh, engine so I'm going to use QuickTime. I recommend you use QuickTime and I'm running Windows 7. For this, okay. So here's my video. You can control the the size of the uh, the video with percentage here. You can, and uh, your mouse wheel can also control that size. And that's pretty good here. Down here you have your uh, play button, pause, rewind. And what you need to do first off is let's set up the video. So let's play it. And whoop, that's a little bit too much. Let's get the ball right when it's out of my hand. So I got the forward, step forward and backward here. This tells you the number of frames you can step. And that's probably right there. That's the best one to start with. So that's frame number four in my video. And this little arrow down here defines my start frame. So I'm just going to click and drag that over there. Now that's my start frame. And I'm just going to get the ball going up and down and that can be my last frame there so I'm going to drag this one here and put it there which is frame 37 and that should give me enough data so if I do rewind now I go back to frame 4 instead of back to the beginning uh, you can also get to this you can also set these from from here you can set the uh, start and stop frame and the step size here uh, the frame rate for this video is about 30 frames per second all right, so let's just play it once again, see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Let's reset. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a um, uh, a calibration on the the video first. To so we're going to do video new calibration stick, and we get th this here. And I went outside and I measured, and from the bottom of the the siding there to the the twelfth one up here is about 1.9 meters. So I'm just going to double click on that. Type in 1.9, hit enter. So there we go. I've scaled my, my video. I can turn off that graphic. I can also set the angle because it's it's not the camera wasn't very square. Uh, so I can click the middle here and drag this, and we can pretty much set this wherever we want. It's not going to be that important. Um, and I grab this little line here, and I can adjust the angle of my video, which is about about there. That's my coordinate system. Now I can turn that off. All right, so I'm going to create a point mass. Here it is, mass A. Um, we can call that something else. Tennis ball. There we go. And if I click here, notice here in this version, you have the opportunity to enter the mass right here. So the mass of a tennis ball is about, mm, it's about 58 grams. So it's, let's just say. 0.06, about 60 grams, 0.06 kilograms, and that's the mass. Okay, so let's do the auto track. Let's start tracking it automatically and enter, enter some data. So here we go. The thing that's a little different in this version is, you see here, you have to hold down the shift and control key first and then click to specify your, your target. So right here, you'll see the cursor change to that circle. circle and you get this you can you know click on it and you can move it up and down you can grab this little handle and you can change the shape and i want to just get a good picture of that tennis ball but not really any more than i need to so there's my my template right there that's my pattern that we're going to look for okay that looks good there and my search box i can control well, this right here, it doesn't have to be too big, but the, it definitely doesn't need to be left and right because the ball is just going to go straight up and down. So I'll make that skinnier search box, and we can just say search. If you want to just search one frame at a time, you can do that, but this will do automatically. And there we go. We're collecting the data. 
and there's the last frame right there. So they all, all the patterns uh, scored well, so I think we have some good data. So let's just close this. And we can turn our trails on and off right here. And we have data over here. Here's our X data. Let's squeeze this over a little bit. Let's get our Y data. That looks very nice. Let's try our Y velocity right there. That looks very nice too. Let's take a look at our acceleration in the Y direction. Okay, that looks a little noisy, but we can click and drag the scale here and we can see that it's it's about just under negative 10, which is what we'd expect. And the other thing we get down here, we can also get kinetic energy. If you go way down the bottom, which I think is out of your display, you have an uh, option for this K, kinetic energy. So we're, this will calculate the kinetic energy for you automatically, which is very convenient. So we're going to um, actually go here and insert a calculation for uh, gravitational potential energy. And we know that because we can know the height, we know the value of gravity, and we know the mass. So let's do that. There are a couple different ways we can do it, but one is right here. We go to tracking control and say define. Mm -hmm. Notice our mass is in here already for the parameters. The data function, we're going to add one. So click on add. And you double click on the name. Let's call that gravitational potential energy, GPE. Hit enter. And if it stays blue, it's, it likes it over here. Double click on that. This we want to do um, MGH if you know that formula. Well, here's the M, and you want to use times. Now you have to use the asterisk for the times. Times G. There's no G, but we G is the acceleration in the Y direction, and then times the height, which is the Y position. There we go. And close. And if it stays and enter, sorry. And if it stays blue, that means it's good. If you make a mistake, like for example, you put a, an X instead of for multiplication instead of the asterisk, and you try and enter that, it says, oh, that's not cool. So asterisk is multiplication. There we go. Now let's also add one for total energy, which is going to be the sum of kinetic and gravitational potential. So let's add, double click here, let's call this total energy. Maybe total mechanical energy if you want that. And this is going to be uh, the kinetic. Click on that. Plus TPE. Enter. And it's blue, so it likes it. So I don't know if you can see that. I can increase the font size a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. There we go. Okay, close that. And now if we go here, click on here, we can find way down the bottom, which you can't see <laughs> anymore, is we can say there's the GPE. Mm, it looks a little strange there. And we can look at the total mechanical energy. Okay, there's that there. Okay, so this total mechanical energy looks a little strange. It should be flat, but I think I know why that is. If I go and look at the GPE, and, and sure enough, this looks like it's upside down. So if I go in, in here, and I can also get to the define way down the bottom of this list is define. And we're back here. Uh, the GPE, since the acceleration is negative, I want to come in here, double click that. I actually need to add a negative sign to turn this around and make it correct. Okay, let's take a look at that. Now the GPE looks like that, looks better. Let's take a look at our total mechanical energy, which is that's starting to look better now. There we go. Okay, we can add uh, more plots rather than one. We can have three. So let's, uh, here's the total mechanical. Let's change this to the gravitational potential. And down here, let's make this one the kinetic. Okay, and we can maximize this. So here are our graphs. It's just kind of nice. Okay, we can re-minimize that. And there's there's essentially our video analysis. So I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you. You can do some other neat things with this, these vectors here. Show you the velocity vectors. I'm going to turn them on and off. Um, and that's it. Rewind, play it. You can see at each point the video will walk through and show you which point the ball is at at each uh, position in its flight, each moment in time, each frame. Okay, that's it. I hope that helps. See ya.